In this example, I'm going to show you how to perform a test to see if there's a difference in the averages for what's called a paired t-test. So we have these before and after uh, readings here. This is for, these are actually fictional values, but um, based off of somewhat realistic values. Um, let's say these are patients um, before and after cholesterol reading uh, amounts. Um, and um, let's say what happened was that these individuals were selected at random uh, and started taking a cholesterol reducing medication. And their levels were recorded at the start of the study. You can call that our baseline. Those are given in column B. And then um, after taking these, this medication for six months, let's assume they all actually took it regularly, et cetera, et cetera. Those same people um, had their values re-recorded again. And that is our after amounts given in column C. And what we want to know here is, is there a difference between the two uh, readings? Okay. So uh, question is, is there enough evidence at the 1% level significance to conclude that the medication reduced the average individual's cholesterol levels? Let's add the word average in there too. Theoretically, we're test testing to see if there's a difference in the average readings. Okay, so here's what we do. We go to the data tab, data analysis, and um, we scroll down here to the paired two sample means test. Because we have the same individuals before and after, and let's assume that other things in their lives remain controlled, that is somewhat out of our control, but let's just assume for simplicity that is true. Then we have a paired difference test here, and that's what we're gonna select. Beautiful. Now. For variable one, you can see the range. Let's just look at it again. I'm just gonna call it my before range here. So click on the top and then control shift down. And for variable two, same idea. It's just the after range. Again, if you wanted to select it all, you can go to the very top here, click on after and then control shift and down. Perfect. Now, our mean difference, we are just testing if, um, like our, our null hypothesis is that there is no difference. Sometimes you can test for a different, like if you wanna test against something other than just a difference of zero, if that makes any sense, then you put that in here. Uh, in our case, we're just testing how far from zero that difference is. Check off labels uh, if you included the top row, which I did, row one has these labels, the before and after. Now you can set your alpha. If we want a 1% level of significance, that's our alpha. Then choose where you put this output. I'm gonna put it in I1. You could put it anywhere you'd like in here. I'm just gonna put it right here. And click okay. Oops, sorry, I'm just redoing what I already had in there. Click OK. Move the little problem setup text box out of the way. And here are our results. So what do those mean? Well, let's have a look here. So we're actually trying to prove that our levels are lower. That means we have the one-tailed test. If we were trying to prove that the, the levels were different, then that would be two-tailed. If we just want to prove that they're lower or have decreased after taking the meds, it's a one-tailed test. So we read this p-value right here. So this guy is the most important value in this readout. Uh, sorry, this is getting a bit cluttered. I'm just going to switch that back here. Um, so that's what we want to look at. We really don't need to look at anything else. If you want your test result, this is your t-test and you could compare it to your t-critical. As long as you're above it in this case, then you reject the null. But all we truly need is this, um, this p-value. 
as long as this p-value is less than the 1% level significance, then we reject H0 and we say that yes, the levels are lower. I'm just going to pause the video and write out that statement. Wonderful. Okay, so here we go. So that p-value is that 0 0.003. And again, we read the one-tailed because we want to prove that the levels have been reduced. Uh, decision is to reject each knot because that p-value is less than the 1% level of significance. Finally, our conclusion, because we reject each knot, then there is enough evidence to conclude that the medication reduced the individual's average cholesterol levels or the average individual's cholesterol levels. Okay, that concludes this hypothesis test on the difference between the cholesterol levels before and after the medication. And the conclusion is yes, these medica this medication appears to have made a difference and reduced the cholesterol levels. Thanks for watching.